Jan Price talks to the movers and shakers in the film business. The Jan Price Show, all about movies. You're listening to The Jan Price Show, and today my guest is director-producer John Walker, and we're going to be talking about his new documentary, and the title of the documentary is Assholes, A Theory. Welcome to the show, John. It's a pleasure to have you here. Well, thanks for having me. I have to tell you, I thought this documentary was absolutely fascinating, especially with everything that's going on in the world right now. It was just, it's just so timely. It definitely is a very, very timely. So tell me about what prompted you to decide to create this documentary. Yes. Well, you know, I, I was having a conversation with, uh, with some colleagues, uh, some female colleagues, actually, and about the notion of, you know, do you have to be an, an a-hole to be, a, you know, successful and to you know, be a great filmmaker or architect or whatever? So I was thinking about that. You know, I, I wonder, you know, women often ask that question, you know, because I think that be, that behavior is often a male behavior. Anyway, uh, make a long story short, I found this uh, the next day. I was uh, walking through my favorite bookstore and there was Aaron James' book, New York Times Best seller uh, with the title that you've uh, you've just mentioned a hell's a theory and uh, so i read it and uh, it was fascinating a book really very complex first thing of course i wanted to do is give my daughter a copy of the book <laughs> I, I wanted because i not only did i think she was bringing a lot of these uh, good guys home but i wanted to give her some um, you know a, a sort of a textbook that defined this behavior and i think that's what the brilliant thing about about the book and and what inspired me was it defines the use of the word very specifically as a behavior behavior of a moral character. This is not a word that one should use to describe someone you don't like. What you're describing is is a moral character who has an entrenched sense of entitlement, is unwilling to listen to the complaints of others, and has this moral sense that he's smarter than you, he's richer than you, whatever, and he deserves he deserves this kind of this behavior. He deserves the selfishness, the self-centered behavior. Anyway, so it's a really good definition. That, that's what inspired me. It is a good definition. And do you think one of the things, I mean, there's so much in this movie movie. There's so much that I want to get into, but the climate of today with social media being so prevalent. I mean, I mean, I'm sure there's always, we've always had a-holes throughout our lifetime and we've all come, encountered them throughout our lifetime. But do you think there's more of a proliferation of a-holes during this time period more than other because social media allows you to hide a little bit and you can act out? Yes. I mean, we, we certainly dealt with that in the film, you know, the social media uh, aspect of this behavior. I mean, there always has been this the people like this, this kind of behavior. The, the problem is, and what we try to show in the film is the need for pushback to maintain an equilibrium. Because if, if this kind of behavior is taking over, if this is the dominant behavior of, say, your boyfriend or your boss or, you know, somebody who happens to be running your country, this is a problem when they dominate. And so so it, it, pushback is, is important to, to keep this balance. But as you mentioned, social media is is really upping the ante in terms of the ability to not to have to say the name or to say something in somebody's face. It's a very different situation if you're standing face to face with somebody, what you call them, whether it's the A word or whatever. However, if you're hiding behind, uh, as I am right now, a computer and they can't see me, that's a lot easier to uh, send out abusive language and behavior. So so this social media is allowing for this uh, this kind of dialogue to be increasing. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's unfortunate. And it's 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 a clickbait culture. And unfortunately, a bad behavior is good clickbait. And so the more bad your behavior is, the more clicks you're getting, the more popular becoming. And it's it's a really a vicious, vicious cycle until it gets out of control. It really is. It really is. And you, t- you know, you, uh, you also, I mean, I love it because there's this, like, you know, a psychological study of this, obviously, and you have a lot of psychologists on the show, including Aaron James, who wrote the book. And I thought his theories and all of them, I mean, you have a number of psychologists on, but this learned behavior in childhood, you know, I mean, we all kind of tend to be the center of the world, you know, when we're first born, but it's also something that we need to teach our children that they're not the center of the world (laughs) all the time. And you wonder in this culture of, you know, being with children, you know, that, oh, we want them to be the best and we want them to always win and, you know, everybody should get a prize and those kinds of things. Do you think that's fostering more of this kind of behavior as children begin to get older? Yeah. I mean, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not, I'm not sure 
what's fostering it, but in terms of in childhood, that sort of childhood behavior. But we do show in the sort of experts or whatever that are talking in the film. For example, as a teenager, and Aaron says this, you know, all teenagers toy with a very self-centered, me, me culture. Uh, but what I, th- there's a good uh, anecdote that, that defines the proper a-hole. And that's somebody who's, who's an a-hole on a daily basis. We all have the capacity for bad behavior. Mm-hmm. And teenagers certainly get into bad behavior. The question is, are we going to be what Aaron calls a proper a-hole? And here, here's an example. On our birthdays, we all have a sense of entitlement. We want to have our cake and eat it too, right? And all of our, you know, our family and our friends buy into this day and, and our, we can behave any way we want on our birthday because they too will have their day in the sun. For the a-hole, it's his birthday every day. So he feels he should be treated specially on a daily basis. That's a, every day. Now, to get to that point, is that if you're if you're behaving badly and no one is checking your behavior, if your parents are letting you get away with this behavior, this self-centered, you know, it's my birthday every day attitude, and then you go into a university and you get into a fraternity culture, let's say, that's very misogynistic, and you're behaving badly and nobody's kicking back, nobody's saying, hey, you know, this is not the way to behave, um, then then you you can become a lifer, you know, and end up mm-hmm. in the corporate world. Uh, in business, in, in finance, in politics, whatever, and, and be a full-fledged, everyday, uh, proper able. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the point that we're making in the film is that parents need to push back, right? Mm-hmm. The, yes. The, the teenager. Uh, if you get into if you get into the you know college uh, environment. Uh, fraternity, you know, your friends, as we as we show one a college student, you know, that, that push back against this terrible misogynistic behavior that his colleagues were, you know, and he said, this is not right. So again, pushback. Um, we gave the example of, of a professor of Cornell University professor, a law professor, you know. Yes. And now they have they have a, a, a no a whole hiring policy in terms of, you know, and they're very concerned about this behavior and they're teaching these students to become lawyers. Right. Uh, and some lawyers have a bad reputation for bad yes. things. Yeah. So they're very, very conscious of this. Anyway, long story short, but in the film we show this, she had a student that was being, that was clearly going in that direction. And she called him out, right? Uh, she called him out and um, he, he came back and he, he sort of apologized. He says, well, nobody ever told me my... You know that I was behaving this way, and he ended up becoming an A plus student, and uh, he completely transformed. So it's an example that pushback works, and we have you know many other examples in, in the film. Yeah, I love I love that story about the professor who decided to yes. you know call him into her office and yeah. you know have a discussion with him, and and how many people feel that they can do that? You know, sometimes right. you just let that behavior continue to go right. unchecked, and that is the problem. I also, as long as we're talking about Cornell University. The um, student who was there, who had been, I guess he was in the military first before he went to school and um, the whole idea of fraternities. Let's talk a little bit about that, because that's a culture that seems to foster this type of behavior. Right. Yeah. I mean, what was interesting, you know, he came out of the military, um, had, you know, had been deployed in Afghanistan. I mean, you know, he he said that you know the U.S. He was, in, he was a Marine, a U.S. Marine. You know, is one of the is a fraternity. You know, it's and and to prepare you to go to war, you know, that you're treated. You know, you're called every name in the book, and it's it's very tough training because they're preparing you to have bullets flying over your head, right? And they're toughening you up, and and you know this bad behavior and so on and so forth is is all part of this preparation, and he gets that. What he doesn't get is that kind of behavior in the university environment with young teenage students that are acting this way, and they're going on to become leaders, you know, in politics, in business, and whatever. Um, this behavior is not acceptable, and particularly the misogynistic side of it. Uh, the way women are treated and so on and so forth. So he, he you know, he pushed back and um, he got a lot of resistance from it. He, he wrote something in the local uh, in the Cornell paper and so on. And uh, he had a lot of pushback, but uh, he, he maintained. And, um, you know, that voice needs to be out there. But sometimes, it, it, you know, it takes a lot of courage to push back. Oh, I, I was, you know, yeah, I thought that was just a wonderful um well, there were so many wonderful things in this in this documentary, and I highly do recommend it to everyone. 
that you know that he did again stood up spoke up um and 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 it was misogynistic behavior towards a, a female student that uh led him to say hey no 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 this is not right you know right. this is not this is no, no we should not be doing this and this is the kind of thing that's you know as we we read a lot about uh, that's going on in, in colleges today. Let's talk about uh, leaders, leaders, people, leaders who are a holes. And uh, yeah. you, you talk, you did an extensive uh, segment on um, the Italian leader, and I want to say what's his name, Busconi. Uh, Berlusconi. Yeah. What, what is it? Berlusconi. Berlusconi. Yes. Let's Ber- talk about that, that a little bit because that's kind of that was fascinating, also. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we we chose Berlusconi because he's you know he's been in power for thirty years in Italy and uh, you know totally self centered. You know, it's uh, as some of the commentators in the film was saying um, that covered him and the, with the Economist and so on. They put him on the cover. You know he, how he screwed up his country. Uh, you know, it's uh, he's operating for his own interests, not for the interests of the country. You know, putting putting his own personal interests front and center. Gee, that uh, sounds familiar, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, it did, it did sound familiar to me. And and he's sort of a stand-in. I mean, we we sort of ignored uh, you know the leadership uh, in 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 the U.S. Um, because. For, for, for really, for a reason, it, it was a political reason, not not to uh, not to uh, look at the U.S. situation, because um, you know what what Aaron what Aaron writes in the book is that you know it doesn't matter if you're on, if you're a Democrat or Republican, you're on the left, you're on the right. Anyone has the potential to be an a hole, right? right? So so it's not it's not about the left and the right situation, you know. Um, and and you know if we went if we if we attacked you know a Republican then we're going to be seen I, I, you know we're a Democrat or whatever it's not the point the point is it's human behavior and it doesn't matter what what culture or political point of view you come from you can act this way and we want to make the point of the impact the negative toxic impact that it has on others when an a hole is operating only for their own interest and not the interest of the others, whether it's their family, their their company, or their country. It's not acceptable. And that's that's what that's the bottom line. And that's what, what Aaron was seeing that that he wanted to put that message out. And that's what our film is showing. This is not acceptable behavior. We have to realize that it's not acceptable. Exactly. And and I loved um, you talked with the CEO of um, Baird, uh, okay. which I just I thought uh, Paul put Paul Purcell, Purcell yeah. and the chairman of, of Baird, and which is a multinational wealth management and exactly. equity firm. Um, exactly. If people don't know that name, but it's something that everybody should know their name because I certainly would want to do business with him before yeah. I would do business with other companies. So well, let's talk yeah. about that because yeah. that I, I thought that was absolutely wonderful. And I hope more companies have adopted um, his no a hole rule. Yeah. And, <laughs> so. and, and he doesn't see. He doesn't use the word a-hole. He spells it out, you know. Yes. <laughs> and when he, first, when he first came into the company, you know, he said, he said, I want to put into this, I want to put in this, no, we're being polite here on air, no right. a-hole rule. Uh, and some of his, some of the board members were like, oh, we can't say that. You know, I we can't use that word. But he said, no, no, that's, anyway, he convinced them that this was, and and they're very open about it. If you, if you come in and looking for a job here, and we find out that you're an a-hole, you're going to be fired. So don't don't even bother coming into the door, right? And you know there, and that's the attitude and uh, and the approach that the, their clients come first. They're also it's interesting in terms of a capitalist culture, is that he says, look, I'm not a socialist, you know, but they're long term thinking, you know, and they don't have to. They're they're not looking at greed. They're looking at at, at maximizing short term profits. They're looking at the long term. Partly that's they have the ability to do that because the the company they're their own shareholders so the employees are shareholders so they're protecting their own firm um, in the financial crisis 2008 crisis and which was a crisis of a holes in charge clearly um, they they weren't losing people any money they weren't in all these schemes they didn't have to fire anybody when everybody was you know in the financial sector was firing thousands of people. They didn't they didn't have to fire them and didn't lose anybody any money, you know. And they're a very successful 
firm, right? And they're they're beating their competition on a three to one basis in terms of returns, as he said. So it we kind of start the film, you know, with that question that I mentioned earlier: Do you have to be an a hole to be successful? Well, the answer is no. And and Baird is the example of a of a firm, a financial firm that is operating against this behavior, and they're making money. They're they're on the, they've been in the top companies to work for, the number four top companies to work for, uh, a Forbes uh, list for like 10 years. And uh, uh, 16, I have it here for 16, 16, 16, 16 years. Sorry, 16, yeah, 16, <laughs> Fortune, yeah, 16, yeah. Fortune 100 is best company to work for uh, yeah, for 16, 16 years. years. And yeah. it's, yeah, that's a long time. People are wandering the halls uh, saying to me, I was you know, talking to people, like, I can't believe work there. I've been here like 20 years. I can't believe how great this place. And everybody wants to work there. When you hear this yes. is one of the best companies to work for in America, and you're coming out of college, you want to work there. So they get the choice of the best people, but not the best a-holes. Mm-hmm. Not <laughs> <laughs> well, I loved to, and this is so, so, so telling, how applicants treat the receptionist yes. when they're coming in. And that that's one of their first questions to the receptionist is how were they when they were waiting how, to come in to be you? interviewed? How did they treat you? How do, they, how do you treat the little guy, the little person, right? Exactly. 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 And, and that's, go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. No, I said, that's, you know, that's the way it should be always, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, so, so imagine though, you come out of a meeting and the CEO and the human resources are there and they go to the, you know, the person answering the phone, receptionist and say, so how do they treat you walking in the door? You know, oh, well, they were really pushing they're really rude. Okay, done. Like yeah. all the, the reception to say they were they were treating me, you know, whatever. Done. Not coming back in the door. <laughs> it's yeah. quite incredible, you know. I love it, and that's environment that everybody should aspire to. Companies to work for, but also yeah. companies to aspire to be and encourage that type of environment. So, which is I just, just go I ahead. Just want yeah. to say a note. Yeah, I just want to say a note that unfortunately, Mr. Purcell has passed uh, away. Oh, uh, oh, I did not. Oh. Yes. Oh. Sadly, he passed with cancer and uh, just recently. And, um, you know, I, we've been in touch uh, after we made the film. And, and the company was getting emails all the time, having seen him in the film, saying, wow, what, just wanted to thank him for his behavior. And, and, you know, again, he's setting an example, right? And, and, and this is the thing that, you know, you have a CEO, somebody in charge. You know, these are people that are supposed to be um, role models for others. Exactly. You know, exactly. We don't want a-holes as role models, please. No, you know, lead by example. Exactly. Exactly. Um, It's sort of what we, you know, and again, not to get too political, but that our new president elect is, you know, leading by example saying, okay, it's time for healing. It's, you know, we've been divisive. Now let's start the healing process. And we do need that. And somebody just posted something negative on a Facebook page, a post I had posted, and they posted something negative about someone else on a post. And I immediately just took it down, I you know, deleted it because I, you know, and I'm, I actually haven't had time to go back and say, you know, if anybody really posts anything negative towards someone here and put someone down, then, you know, I'm going to just block you and, and delete your post because that's not what this is about. It's right. about healing. And that's what we need more of. That's why I, I love this movie because there's so many wonderful examples. You have the wonderful John Cleese, who I absolutely, absolutely adore. How did you attract him to this project? Oh, yeah, yeah it, it's been great. We've had, you know, he came out and supported the film when we were having our theatrical release and, uh, our Premier, world premiere and so on and he's, he's a, you know the publicity for us um so he uh, I, I got i saw one of read one of his tweets uh early on uh he had read aaron's book and loved the book so i contacted him and gave him the con wrote him an email in the context of what i was planning to do with his film inspired by the book and uh you know would you be interested in, in chatting about it and, and he was right away and we had we hit it off we had a wonderful morning together sh- uh, interviewing and talking about this subject and as i say he spent time with us and uh yeah he's just been a real gentleman and uh you know he's uh he's a comedian but he's also he's, he's a writer uh and uh you know a very very intelligent wise uh, individual you know and uh, so he had he had a lot of uh, interesting things to say. 
Yes, yes. And I love how in this film you interject, you know, scenes from various movies throughout to yeah. make your point. Yeah. Uh, and you certainly use A Fish Called Wanda, which is one of my one of the classics, you know, yeah. in, in yeah. it and, and many others. You've got so many, The Wolf of Wall Street and um, many others that give the example of this. I, I don't want to let things go too far before we talk about uh, Sherry Lee Benson. And I don't know how to pull the, pull the chuck. Uh, uh, about... Check, yeah. Yes. And talk a little bit about, she was the yeah. Royal. Well, go ahead. You tell yeah. the story about who she yeah. is and, yes. and why so her story she, is really so important. Was, <laughs> yeah. So she, she's a, a former police officer with the uh, Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Uh, and uh, she's my superhero. Uh, she's my yes. you know, superhero pushback. Wow. 20 years of dealing with, you know, in, in, in a very small town, uh, the only female officer, and uh, you know she would. They were taught, uh, you know, not to lie, tell the truth, and so on and so forth. But when she told the truth about a fellow officer who was who had been drinking and and hit somebody, and he wanted her to lie about this, uh, she she wouldn't. And uh, anyway, it just snowballed into this attack on her. Uh, and led to, you know, horrible, horrible, uh, you know, she found a, a dead prairie chicken with blood all over it in her, in her, in her locker. And it, it got worse and worse. It, it, oh. That was just the beginning. And she had, she fought back for years. She finally, it was dreadful. I mean, she was, came to the point of suicide. I can contemplate wow. suicide. She pulled back from that. She tried to get the attention of fellow colleagues. She went to the management with complaints. Uh, and finally, she went, uh, she couldn't get journalists, anybody. She finally went public with her book. No woman wanted, women not wanted, excuse me, women not wanted, went public with the book. And uh, first, you know, to do that. Anyway, long story, many, many years of fighting this. And finally, there was a class action suit that was signed by 4,000 women, uh, in, you know, in, with similar cases. Uh, there's, a, in fact, another class action suit against the RCMP with, with male signatures on it as well, being treated badly by this, this kind of culture. Uh, so it's not only misogynistic, but it's, uh, you know, a bullying culture. And, um, and the, the government uh, appointed a, the first female head of the organization, and uh, so, you know, things are, it was kind of a win. She, she started this, uh, this little, uh, you know, this movement of, of bringing attention to this. And, uh, you know, it's happening now all over, right, with the police uh, forces uh, around the world, you know, uh, treating, you know, the race, systemic racism and so on. So it's all just bubbling. And, and uh, so it, it's a story that's relevant to, to that kind of behavior. And again, not all police are a-holes and behave badly, you know, right. it's like they're, right. they're all human beings, but they're, they're, you know, they're not all, but, but if we don't push back, then it just gets worse. Right. Exactly. And she is a superhero. I mean, I can't believe that she withstood this for over 20 years. That's just pretty amazing yeah. um, that she stood up. It's a, yeah. Kept fighting, kept fighting. Yeah. And now, now she's a, she's a motivational speaker uh, dealing with these issues and uh, you know, uh, she's just a very, very articulate and uh, knows how to how to deal with this, and she, and she survived. You know, she survived it and and won in the end. And uh, so it's it's a very positive story. So we do have a lot of positive stories in the film about pushing back. You know, you do well, right, John? Where can people see uh, assholes a theory? So uh, Gravitas uh, Ventures is the U.S. distributor, and so they're just starting to release on VOD. And uh, so right now it's on uh, iTunes and it's going to just, you know, start to uh, start to go out there now as we as we speak. So it's just starting to enter the, enter the marketplace now. But uh, right now it's iTunes. For, for well, everyone, please search it out because it's it's uh, it's very entertaining, but enlightening and certainly, you know, it's educational. It's got everything in it. And it's it's just a, it's, a, it's a really wonderful documentary, John. And I really appreciate you coming on the show. Well, thanks for having me. I really enjoyed talking and I, I'm glad that you, uh, you know, you sort of got it. Uh, we're, we're trying to put forward, so that's great. 
<laughs> Thank you. If you want to listen to The Jam Price Show, you can listen whenever, wherever at thejampriceshow.com or the iHeart Podcast Network, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, anywhere where you get your favorite podcast. Also, please like The Jam Price Show on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at The Jam Price Show. Thank you for listening. Jan Price talks to the movers and shakers in the film business. The Jan Price Show, all about movies. 